new the new gold for biodome? You mean gold reapples papoose? Oh, it's common. I had to get things together really fast. I mean, if you want. Oh, let's see. End goal. Title. Bio. Doom. Review. Goal amount. One thousand dollars. End after... How long do we want to make this thing? Let's make it... Oh, fuck it, let's go three months. Really put the pressure on. So that's... Zero... One... Slash... Zero... Six... Slash... Twenty... Twenty-two. Start go. Done. Well, there we go. As per Riappa's Pepoose's request, Biodome is now on the table. You fucking lunatics. Oh my god. Well, I'm retiring because this was the- there's no way to beat this stream. <sighs> okay, first of all, you guys are lucky that my tacky as shit friend Tad even has a copy of this garbage for me to borrow. Secondly, Yes, it really did take me this long to get through it. has been witness to a continual parade of environmental disasters. Yeah, like Biodome. The place is the Arizona desert. Here, a team of scientists and investors, led by Dr. Noah Faulkner, has come together to create the first space station on Earth. Nobody tell Elon Musk you can do that. This Earth Day, Dr. Faulkner and four carefully chosen, highly qualified scientists will seal themselves inside. Their mission will be to sustain life for one year while living in harmony with nature. So, they built the most sophisticated greenhouse on the planet, and their experiment is to see if living in it will kill them. These are qualified scientists, you say. Welcome to Biodome! Do oh, fuck yourself, I ain't welcome to shit. So yeah, these five geniuses are going to prove that humans can live in an artificially stable environment that's been placed somewhere it doesn't occur in nature. You don't fucking say. And with that adorable expo dump out of the way, we meet our... Heroes? Paper covers rock! To lose a buckwheat rock! Sorry, you have to assume the position. Because why should your protagonist's first sound be words in the form of a sentence? Stop it! <laughs> hmm, incomprehensible noise followed by the fakest pratfall of 1996. If I had internal organs, they'd be cringing into a full-blown seizure five minutes in. Perfect. No, it isn't! And after that unforgettable introduction to whatever their names are, their ridiculously beautiful womenfolk arrive to retrieve them. And I think we know where most of the budget went. You know how we're supposed to go with you guys to this whole Earth Day thing at the park? Yeah. But listen, we can't go. Doyle had a bad accident. 
First of all, I enjoy the fact that she doesn't care about Doyle's twitching immobile body. Secondly, Dumbass's story is that his housemate suffered a major head trauma and he just left him there on the floor? You're opening your film with the notion that a main character is so stupid he doesn't know that 911 exists? Or at the very least, he respects his girlfriend so little he thinks she doesn't know that 911 exists. This wouldn't happen to be one of your convenient little accidents, would it? Oh, nipples! I mean, <clears throat> these men often beat each other senseless to get out of participating in events important to their romantic partners. If they hate spending time with them so desperately, why not just break up with him? And why don't the women dump them for being violent, self-destructive, disinterested tits? I, I mean dicks. God damn it. Damn it, but you guys promised to help us pick up trash today. Yeah, that's what Earth Day's all about, saving the environment. Girls, you're thinking too globally. You have to act locally. They want to clean up a park. Do you think it's not a local park? Alright, bud. You win. Again. What? How? Send Doyle to the ER if you really think he's injured and go to your Earth Day thing. If you know it's bullshit, take a stand, you spineless worm. Luckily, her friend is a fucking detective. The only thing that hit Doyle's head is this book. Ow! I can't believe you cracked Doll Skull just to get out of this. Okay, first of all, Thank you for kneeing Polly Shaw in the dick. Secondly... This wouldn't happen to be one of your convenient little accidents, would it? I can't believe you cracked Doll Skull just to get out of this! Character continuity in the very first scene? Why fucking bother? This is Hands Across America all over again. I had arthritis. <sighs> Farm Aid? I had fleas. The Save the Wells rally? Saltwater makes Doyle boat? You guys are pathetic. Yes, they are, and so are you, for allowing these rotten little douchebags to walk all over you time and time again. I say, with so many interesting and endearing characters, how could this film fail? Face it, we are dating primates. I should hope so. Well, they're getting better. They're taking yoga, and you're the one that keeps on raving about how flexible Bud is getting. There is something about a man who can lick his own back. <clears throat> Admitting that the only thing you have in common is sex is tantamount to admitting that your relationships are completely meaningless. Besides, you're too sexy for Polly fucking Shaw. They should be taught a lesson. They should be punished. Oh, uh, first of all, they don't need to be punished. You just need to grow up and end your toxic relationships. Secondly... We just have to be patient. They should be taught a lesson. Two characters have now contradicted their own positions in under ten minutes. Hey, Bud Weezer. Hey, Momo. How's the sanitation detail going, huh? Oh, it's great, but we're gonna split. We met these guys from Arizona Tech and they're taking us out to this keg at Vasquez Lake. What? You met men? Well, they were going to meet some eventually. Oh, and they're on the swim team. You cannot go to that keger party at Vasquez Lakes with the swimmers, okay? What are you talking about? Hold on, guys, we're coming. Whatever, bud. Everyone lies to everyone. I'm really hoping these good people find true love. Can you believe those girls? I mean, it's not like we're not in the same environment. Animal cruelty? Finally, something funny. And by the way, you don't clean up your own environment. I think when they see we've gotten off the couch, they're going to go into seizures. Oh, wrong. Yes, when they see you're motivated by a lack of sex and not by a bond between shared interests, That'll really make things better. 
And as they've taken the bait, they arrive at Valthgate's Lake finding a sandlot junkyard. Makes you kind of proud knowing we got such crafty girlfriends, though. <laughs> We're lucky, guys. Mm hmm, that's for sure. Uh, so. You think they lied to you and sent you on a wild goose chase? But you're not concerned they really are off banging supple college meat? Vasquez Lake. More like Vasquez Crapple. They used to be fish here, remember? Yes, I did, Doyle. Yeah. I'm guessing there also used to be a fucking lake! Hey! Don't leave that there, Stub. Free refills with proof of purchase seal. <laughs> nice call. Try <laughs> So, your eco happy girlfriends send you to a nostalgic setting ruined by pollution. And instead of an actual moment of clarity on how you mistreat humanity and the planet, we get this. Stop it! Uh, I got to piss. Mm -hmm. Car kit? Ready, Tori. Well, let's go at the mall right there. Welcome to Biodome. Welcome to the future. Oh, well, welcome well, to me. the place I'm going to drain my lizard. <laughs> Aside from the fact that the Biodome billboard doesn't declare the building to be a shopping center, you're in the desert with no traffic. Why not just pull over and piss on the side of the road? We could avoid the entire film that way. After all our careful planning, the many years of meticulous research and experimentation, our dream is finally at hand. Ooh, a scene that's going to reiterate all the eco babble from the opening segment, rendering it entirely pointless and making the film redundant by the 12 minute mark? Cool! We stand today at the bridge to a future where man and the ecosystem can live in harmony. Yes! We knew! Just get to the idiots sneaking inside! Alas, their winning personalities get them into a tiff with the officer guarding the entrance. Listen up, bacon boy. Just want to go inside and take a pee, and then we gotta go. Yeah, we're up with that, G. You girls want to get physical. <laughs> you know how when you have to pee so bad you can't hold it so it gets super easy to jump around like a spastic baboon? Well, this movie is all about science. I can't do it here. Tiny Elvis has stage fright. Just think of the water. You're standing... Just... Come on. Just let it go. Come on, hurry. I can't do it here. So get in your car, drive up the highway where there were no people, and piss on the side of the fucking road! But no! Bob throws another pack of firecrackers because he just carries the bundle with him at all times, apparently, and scares the shit out of everyone so he and Doyle can move unnoticed into the facility. By the way, remember a second ago when Doyle couldn't urinate because his penis was too shy? Well, now with Bob staring at his cock in action, he's good to go! Because character consistency... is bad. Warning. Toxins being introduced in the rainforest. Homeostasis is at 99.1%. Alright, I don't care how this computer system knew that Doyle's urine was a foreign element seconds after his relief. My problem here is that it only cared about his bathroom break. Watch this! The team goes inside using the same entrance as Bud and Doyle. Here we go, see you in a year. That door was propped open the whole time. That means the interior of the biodome was never at 100% homeostasis because it was sharing atmosphere with the outside world. The countdown clock begins the instant the outer door seals, which means even without Bud and Doyle going inside, this project began with tainted atmosphere, as well as any contaminants those dumbass geniuses brought in with them. 
Congratulations, Mr. Director. You broke your fucking film. And then, in unpredictable comedic fashion, Bod and Doyle show up at the perfect second to ruin the moment in front of the press. Get them out of there! Oh my god. Da, da, da. Doyle? Really? I, don't, I don't think this is a mall. Get Don't worry, Professor Wiener. Since the building's been open for who knows how long, I'm sure plenty of local flies and spiders and beetles and shit have made their way inside to balance out all the meticulously chosen insect life you've allowed to escape. Mr. Leakey, has there been some kind of security breach? Who are these men? Has the biodome been contaminated? <laughs> yes, but not by those idiots. We actually left the door open this whole time. This pre-planned addition to Team Biodome is intended to simulate the chaos theory as we encounter it in nature. Because the purpose of a biodome is to be chaotic. Oh, and by the way, if it was all part of the plan, it wouldn't be fucking chaos. For a billionaire, you're a terrible liar. Who would be stupid enough I think Biodome was more. Bud McIntosh and Doyle Johnson. Generation X roadkill on the superhighway of progress. Oh, they're not terrorists. It's worse. They're junior college students from Tucson. They really did think it was a mall. I suppose that's intended as a rib toward Tucson. Cute. Except this one is 30, this one is 33, and when you're that stupid in the 90s, no, you are not still burning money by attending college. And pardon my digression, but this does beg the question, what money do these idiots have? They either rent or own a house together, they've got snowboards, surfboards, phone and cable, that shit's not cheap, but they also seem to do literally nothing. Something has to make sense, damn it! Faulkner, get them out now! The doors are sealed for one year. I can't open the doors. Yes, you can! They've been inside for fucking five minutes! Just throw them out, rebalance your bullshit, and start over! This is the second point in the film where you could completely avoid the film! Because if I open the doors, the integrity of all the scientific data is compromised. Everything depends on the precise time frame of one year. It was compromised from the get-go because you left the fucking door open! In fact, kicking them out is a great excuse! Instead of taking responsibility for fucking the facility's integrity, you can delay the lockdown for recalibration and blame it on them! Everyone wins! Screw that time frame, I have a hundred million dollars invested in this and I don't intend to lose it because two twits from Tucson can't tell a mall toilet from a damned rainforest! Son of a cocking cunt! The time frame is the entire point of this structure! How are so many genius scientists unable to grasp this simple fucking fix? There is literally no dilemma! This is your problem. Fix it. Then they have to stay. No, uh, all our preparation was for five people, not seven. Adding two more at this stage will throw the whole system off balance. Then the system will adapt. Then what is the point of a biodome? It's been 13 minutes. Just re-fucking start. Why is this genius so fucking stupid? And speaking of stupid, the whole time these morons are discussing why the premise doesn't make sense, Bud and Doyle are hitting on Dr. Sexy Lady. Did it hurt? Did what hurt? When you fell from heaven, did it hurt? <laughs> you know, because their girlfriends mean so much to them. As I'm sure you already know, you have stumbled into an exciting new world. Uh, tell me, have you ever dreamt of being famous? When I was a little kid, I wanted to be a rock star because I could do this with my finger. <sighs> I wonder why people think this script started out as a Bill and Ted sequel. 
What do you boys want out of life? To die and come back as a leotard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I may be able to offer you a springboard to that future. You see, boys, I intend to murder the both of you. I want you to feel right at home. Wah, wah, wah. Well, we'd be obliged if we could get some nice cushy beds, you know, the kind of magic fingers. Yeah, like the ones at the mall, you know, that the big tourists always lie in for free. They sit there and they just plop down, the little kids are around them. Daddy, look at the little thing! And just roll them and roll them. Ow, ow, see you ever say It's funny when two people babble incessantly about nothing. Five? Writers. Actually, we have no extra beds. Uh, can we just get a normal mattress without rollers? Sorry, no. That's why I very staunchly insisted on keeping you here. I'm a very smart scientist. Here, guys. Petra and I can live without this stuff. I know it's not much. Hey, have you ever been with the squirrel on the stub? <laughs> <laughs> so... The two people that show you kindness are rewarded with a creepy sexual innuendo instead of a simple thank you. Nice. Also, why is his impression of a squirrel a wet squishing noise? And I don't know what they mean by been with a stub, but why does it seem to be a broken robot frog? <laughs> 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 Let's go find us some beds. Yeah. Yeah, not let's find a phone and tell our girlfriends about our predicament, as we should have done several fucking hours ago. Just, you know, go find some beds. Which are, which you were told, don't exist. Good. Our heroes are rapists. <laughs> ha ha ha! Sexual harassment is the funniest. Ha ha ha! The next morning, everything is back to normal with no effort from anyone because science is basically magic and the ladies don't bring up the rape thing because, gee, why would they? Look, you guys are the ones that wanted us to stay, okay? Think back, springboard into the future. Okay, we didn't prepare for this voyage. You are absolutely right. You should be brought up to speed. It is time for a tour. Or it's time to contact your beloveds or your families, or your jobs. What were your actual lives again? Boys, boys. From here, you can see all the regions of the biodome. The rainforest, the tropical lagoon, the farm, and the great desert. Every effort was made to duplicate them precisely. And all of this is your home now. Hmm. Yes, they crammed four entirely separate ecosystems into one 2,000 square foot storage locker. Oh, oh. Let's make a rule. Everything that you did at home, you're forbidden to do here. Everything? Chef Gucci Gucci. Chef Gucci Gucci. <laughs> What the hell was that? Don't move. I'll be right back. And where is he going? They don't say. He just had to leave so the idiot twins could wander off unsupervised. And why would you want to leave them unsupervised? Well, how else would a film happen? And how far do these morons get? Oh, about 20 feet. Petra! Tide monitor needs attention. Also, I'm back from wherever I went to do whatever I did. I see Bud and Doyle aren't where I told them to stay, but I have no reaction to that because we couldn't find a sixth writer to give me one. We then go to Cleavage's house where she learns her alleged boyfriend is in the Biodome. By watching it on the news. 
Come on, you guys. This is an important biological experiment. You're gonna ruin everything. Mostly their acting careers. So what are we supposed to do? Just wait a whole year for you guys to get out? What? No! This is the perfect opportunity to drop these shit facts and move on with your lives. They didn't even think to tell you they were trapped in an overgrown greenhouse. They do not care about you. I'm proud of you. Yeah, the way you caused a panic and snuck onto private property and literally pissed on someone's hundred million dollar dream. Who wouldn't be proud? But wait, was the story moving along too quickly for you? Our five writers can fix that. I can't sleep. <sighs> Try watching Biodome. Hey, just think back at those sleepovers we used to have. If you think back then, maybe you'll be able to sleep. Okay. Okay. Oh, what's up, buddy? Cause I'm the whistle. Okay, my Yes, your inexplicable nickname in this film has been Squirrel, so of course, you call yourself the Weasel. Yes, let's grind things to a halt with another pointless cutaway, and let's follow that with a merchandising scheme. It's so important, it's never mentioned again, but it sure does stretch that runtime. And how should we follow that? Remember the time the Magnavox went out when we were kids? What did we do? Die, Another pointless cutaway! It's almost like there's nothing for this plot to fucking do! This is the event that you've been waiting for. It's the annual at Arizona Tech. It's a three-day blowout to benefit the rainforest. There's gonna be, like, seminars and lectures and kegs and dudes galore. Monique, we cannot go to this. Why not, pray tell? Does the name Bud and Doyle ring a bell? Hmm. Your 30-year-old, probably unemployed, self-centered slobs the boyfriends who don't care about you or anything you talk about? Seems kind of familiar. Listen, I love Bud just as much as you love Doyle. We'll fucking stop! But we gotta start thinking about ourselves. They are. And for only the second time in 39 minutes, someone made a valid point. Because the very next thing we see... Perhaps you'd like to join us for a little repartie on the reach? Allow me to present it. Chateau Squirrely Stub. It's a bit plucky, a bit fruity perhaps, but it'll satisfy your palate, especially with the big piece of pork. So that's what happened to our fruit harvest. Your entire harvest fits in a mason jar? Oh, oh, oh sorry, that line was distractingly stupid. No, my point is that Bud and Doyle are hitting on the ladies again. Oh, and when the ladies get pissed that they stole their food and wasted it, the dynamic douches laugh at them. Can't leave that out. I sincerely ask you, audience at home, do you believe these men are actually stupid beyond self-awareness? Or are they a pair of codependent narcissistic personality disorders who simply take pleasure in the suffering of everyone around them? Look at this. While playing hide-and-seek, they might seem childishly brainless, but when Doyle busts into Dr. Wiener's office, this happens. What are these guys? You expect me to believe he's never seen fucking butterflies? They're butterflies from the Brazilian rainforest. So what are you trying to do, like get them to start parking? Actually, yes. In nature, the chances of these two finding each other, or porking, very remote. We hope to breed thousands here. Now here for the first time we see Doyle have a genuine exchange with Dr. Wiener in which the bog man expresses his passionate dream. Gotcha! 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 And immediately Doyle starts blatantly throwing shit with Bod following suit. This isn't cute or funny. This is cruelty. These adult men know full well how important this project is to these scientists and are doing everything in their power to destroy it. And obviously on purpose. If they were being evil to the scientists to get thrown out, that'd be one thing. I would understand. But they're trying to make money on being there while tormenting the crew. They are not just cartoonishly stupid. They are fucking villains. Are those... Biodome Bud and Doyle's girlfriends? Yeah. 
to that bag. Excuse me. Um, are you guys done with those beers? Thanks, but we're having too much fun sober. <laughs> okay, that's cool. We were just going around trying to collect empties and recycle them. Oh, we're well, here. Here, take this. There's like a lot of waste in these parties. That's awfully noble of you. Oh, a couple of things here. First of all, boy, these girls are easy to please. Pick up trash at a lame-ass bar and this chick damn near slides off her chair. Second, of course, why would there be, like, a lot of waste at these parties? The people attending either care about the environment or are pretending to for attention, so... More brilliant writing, I guess? But more importantly, there is no way that Bud and Doyle are actually famous. The outside world thinks these two are poorly dressed scientists, and the project certainly isn't going to promote the fact that these two keep ruining everything the team set out to do in the first place. Hell, we never see any news people checking in on the real team at all, so they're likely not promoting any of it. So why would anyone who attends college keg parties fucking care about Bud and Doyle, much less know who they are? Anatomically correct. <laughs> oh, that's right! The benefactor funding the project is marketing them as some sort of gimmick. Which makes perfect sense since, you know, everyone still thinks they're just poorly dressed scientists, so how the fuck will this make any money? Are you sure this five paper's gonna work? I'm positive, it's really sticky. It's so sticky, it's unraveling perfectly and isn't covered in sand. Also, how the hell did you put that thing together? You felt pretty awful when we let all your bugs out. Yeah, we promised each other we wouldn't get a wink of sleep until we brought back every last bug. Oh, you definitely killed a lot of them, and you also appeared to rather enjoy doing so. Look! Giant fly paper! I think we got all the little mosquitoes, but there's still a couple loose right there flapping right there. Just look how bad they feel about causing this man continuous emotional and psychological suffering. What I wouldn't do for just a, a Big Mac right now. Dude, don't even say that word. <laughs> so, as punishment for destroying the entomologist's entire purpose, they are sent to bed without supper. And doesn't this mean they've officially killed the Biodome project? Anyway, they escape the closet through the vents and travel to another closet where they magically find snack food in a biohazard tub. Because that's where scientists would put it. And they can't even accomplish this without screaming and making a mess. We are 49 minutes into this film. Has anybody noticed a fucking plot yet? Is that laughing gas? No way. <laughs> Don't be silly, boys. It says nitrous oxide, but in this universe, that means it's filled with blue cheese dip. So they huff the nitrous, which the film seems to think is made of bath salts, and get busted in the act. Nitrous <laughs> <laughs> oxide? You crazy? <laughs> yes, madam. Yes, they are. And instead of a closet, this time they're banished to the desert. But we'll starve. Not necessarily. It is life on a taut tensile line, but the desert is an integral part of nature. That sounds like Falconer has no intention of bringing them food. Which I condone, of course, but these two have a clear history of not staying where you put them, so how exactly are you going to keep them there? Not to mention, if there's a way to ruin a desert, Dome and Doma will make it fucking happen. All we need are two helpers. Yeah, so girls come with us, because, well, as you know, girls are an integral part of nature, too. <laughs> Yes, even in exile, their mission to replace their long-forgotten lovers remains top priority. Uh, 
Yes, that's very dramatic. But since the desert is ten feet away from every other biome in this facility, it falls a little flat, doesn't it? We're concerned about Button Doyle. We think they've been down there for long enough. Do you? Yes, we can't just leave them there. Yes, you can! In fact, I encourage it! They can't survive. It would be murder. Yes! That's fine! No. It's progress. We're culling the herd. They are a symbol of everything that is wrong for this world. They don't care. They don't matter. Ladies, if you don't want them to die for whatever reason, you could always hand them supplies from a few feet away. And as for this attempt to make Noah sound evil, yeah, he's entirely correct that getting rid of the problem would solve the fucking problem. Which, you know, he could have done at the fucking beginning. Oh, and speaking of colossal inability to tell a fucking story... Bro, wait, wait, wait! Uh, a key! Uh, uh, no way! I don't even care that there's a key in the lock. I can't even be angry that there's a window that locks with a key in the first place, because I'm still angry that it's not even marked as a fucking exit at all! So what is the fucking purpose? Why would an emergency exit be something you can lock? Or why would a maintenance hatch need to be locked from the inside? And why would either of them be windows you'd have to climb through? And how the fuck do you forget the fucking keys when the entire point of this facility is to be in immaculate fucking order? Oh wait, that's right. These five fucking people are fucking idiots. Anyway, right off the bat, they discover their car is booted for illegal parking. And since they've had numerous chats with the outside world, that's really fucking stupid. They even order pizzas to be delivered to them outside the biodome instead of calling the women they're allegedly in love with for actual help. I'm ready to beg for something to make any fucking sense. Here are the pizzas. The bladder busters are free because I couldn't find the goddamn place. It's the only building on a lonesome desert road. Please give me something that makes fucking sense. Oh, creepy stepfather gives them a flyer for the girls' Save the Environment party, because of course he has one, why wouldn't he? And then drives off without getting paid instead of helping our heroes go to said party. Well, gee, now you're making too much sense, Philim. Tone it fucking down. All we gotta do, bro, is out-party the partiers. Bring the mountain to Muhammad. Throw a bigger batter bash than any college would ever allow. Show the girls uh, that we uh, care about the environment, too. Do we? No. <laughs> If everyone's already at a party, why would they want to come to yours? Also, are straight up telling the audience that your plan is to deceive these women in order to keep them in controlling parasitic relationships? I, uh... I, I don't know, I sort of appreciate the, um... Honesty, I guess? Where are we gonna throw this party? Seriously, aside from the fact that it would be utterly impossible to prepare for a mass gathering inside the biodome without everyone in there stopping you, how would you even invite people? Oh right, they call that guy who isn't a character and have him print flyers. That'll do it. Party of Biodome? Alright, let's go! Acting in Biodome? Not on my watch, bro! Also, what moron leaves an event featuring Tenacious D? 
Obviously, in real life, nobody would, but this movie is a cartoon for babies, so 5,000 douchebags immediately show up to destroy private property. Something is happening. Your building is made of windows! How did you not notice invaders? Again! Damn. If only you had some sort of, I don't know, monitoring system. Then the ladies arrive and reaffirm that they too are fucking worthless. Where, Where do you fucking think? Let's stop this. Stop what? Yes! Dora, look at this place. It's being destroyed. I thought you guys wanted, like, a big environmental party. You assholes! Don't you care about anything? Not you fucking knew this, but you're killing the biodome. Luckily, it looks like an ounce of responsibility has finally sunk in, and they're about to cancel their party. Or they do nothing whatsoever, and we simply fade to mourning with the ladies cleaning up the aftermath of drunken disaster. We're sorry. Yeah, we didn't think. Yo, yeah, well, that's the problem, bud. You never think about anything. Which you've known for years. Yet you stay with them for no discernible reason. Which means that this, at least partially, is your fucking fault. It took years to build this world. You geniuses took only one month to destroy it. And you let them. It's over. Can it be? Where are you guys headed? Out. Well, wait. You can't leave. We're going to need your guys' help. For what? To clean this place up. You... You, you aren't even asking for their help? You brought ruination to a place you didn't even belong, and you're simply demanding they help you revive an artificial planet? Which you don't even know how to do, so by help, you mean fix this complex thing we murdered? There's no point in staying, bud. The ecosystem is dead. It's not dead, it's just thrashed. The point was to live in a sealed environment and maintain perfect homeostasis without contact from the outside world. The entire experiment has been compromised. Well, yeah, from the very beginning. That hasn't even slowed you down, though, so that's kind of a bad argument. Wait! Screw the experiment! No one leaves! Too grand, he's taking them hostage. You guys have spent your whole lives trying to make the world a better place, right? Well, here's your chance. Only it's not perfect. It's like it is out there. Come on, guys. We gotta save the biodome. So I guess when you said Screw the experiment That was your way of saying Let's save the experiment I love a script where individual characters Don't know what the hell they're trying to say In five seconds I'm gonna swallow this key So if you wanna leave you Gotta do it now Really? Yes, they'll have to go out the front door now. We're all gonna die! Yeah, unless you go out the front door! Elsewhere, the infamous biodome is back in the news. It seems a standoff has developed between scientists still inside and project investors. <laughs> all I can say right now is that we're still negotiating, trying to keep them aware of the dangerously low level of oxygen inside. That's all for now. Well, the place is still jam-packed with plants, so either Mr. Leakey was lying to the public, or the script doesn't know how oxygen works. And what are they negotiating anyway? It's your building. If you want them out, go get them. 
Do you know how many laws you've broken? How many? <laughs> but, Doyle, where's the key to the back door? Wait, 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 wait. Aside from the front entrance, that is the only way in or out? There are no other exits in this entire building. And by the way, if you knew about this back door the whole time, why didn't you bring it up when Faulkner refused to let them out at the fucking beginning? It seems like a relevant fucking point to have mentioned. Bud and Doyle refuse to speak to anyone but you. You would be doing the world and posterity a great favor if you could convince them both to give up this foolish quest. They'd be helping the world by not cleaning up their multi-million dollar damages? Whatever, let's have another exchange between our main characters and their love interests. Um, so, uh... So, when are you guys gonna come out? Earth Day. You guys still mad at us? Is that what this is all about? This isn't one of our pranks, Monique. We're for real. You really for real? I think about you guys all the time. Oh, we miss you too. You've come a long way, bud. Well, that's all you get when your characters are so well-defined that they literally have nothing to say to each other. I guess when Leaky said, Bud and Doyle won't talk to anyone but you, he forgot to add, but they won't talk to you either. We then get a montage of not much at all to vaguely indicate the restoration of the Biodome over several months. And you know what's missing? Dr. Faulkner! Yes. Since the night of the party, Faulkner has been in hiding, instantly transformed into scientific Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> so you can blast away the concrete interior with a pickled egg, but you can't, say, knock in a window wall with an excavator. This movie is just so scientific. And with less than a day to go, Faulkner fills a raft with coconuts. <laughs> I don't know why he needed the raft. Or why he'd be out in the open like that. Or why he was underwater just then. I, uh... I don't understand anything about this particular scene. Ladies. Hey guys. We just, um, we wanted to say thanks for everything. You're thanking them for destroying your work? Yeah, you know, we thought you were brain damaged or something. But we were wrong. No, you weren't! What the hell?! I know a guy who's tough but sweet. Uh Ladies, see, remember that time they snuck into your rooms and groped you while you slept? I'm sorry, it's just I have girlfriends on the outside of the dome. Don't like you even care! And remember how nobody had a clue where Faulkner had disappeared to? What? Do you hear that? Yeah, what is it? Mm -hmm. Check out Faulkner's secret hatch action. Right, no one standing at the control center ever heard Faulkner blowing shit up directly beneath them, but these two mutants could hear him humming in his basement lair while they were in a closet down the hall. That's not horrible writing in any way, so they climb down to find their missing man. I have a lovely sack of coconuts that I've altered in a small way. I'm rigging some pyrotechnics for the door opening ceremony.
And since these two bricks called process human communication, they help the madman plant his bombs. <laughs> Oh damn, those window walls are tough. That was no ordinary coconut. You already knew that, you worthless idiot! And instead of using their newfound friendly rapport with Faulkner to try to talk him down... <laughs> Rochambeau for the dome, Doc? You feel lucky? Well, yeah. I think I do. On three. One, two, three. Paper? Well, I'll be damned. A funny moment. Give me the detonator. What is the magic word? Seriously? There has to be a magic word. What is the magic word, Mr. Venkman? Please. Anyway, after a chase montage, Faulkner runs into the cow. You remember that cow, how it was so important and they talked about it all the time and they had all those scenes together. And they struggle for the dropped detonator. <laughs> oh, I suddenly feel like every single moment in this film could have been resolved with a rock to the forehead. Warning. <laughs> Detonation in five, four... Three, two, one. Destruct sequence deactivated. The bright red button was the off button. Regardless, they all get together and celebrate their safety and the rescue of the project. But since they are inhumanly stupid, they didn't restrain Faulkner, so... He just left and grabbed one of the hundred randomly placed coconut bombs that can still explode just from mild impact. And everyone died. Thank fuck. <laughs> Well, there goes the happy ending. Well, we definitely learned a few things, that's for sure. Ha! Ha! For one, we definitely have to listen to... Your girlfriends? Yes, but most importantly, Mother Nature. Uh, uh-oh. What's wrong, sweetie? I think Mother Nature's calling me again right now, squirrel. Can you cork it? Negatory! Well, there's no place to go out here. Ah! So then they pull into a nuclear power plant and melt themselves into goo. They don't show them dying of painful, disintegrating, radioactive death. I just know in my heart that it happens. So that's Biodome, a movie where nothing happens, and yet I keep begging it to shut the fuck up. Honestly, think about the story here. Hey, right. There wasn't one. Well, okay, think about the characters then. These two are dating men who neither respect them nor care about their interests. Why? No reason. These two get harassed and sexually assaulted, then come to their rapist defense. Why? No reason. This guy sabotages his life's work because he refuses to reset a timer. Why? No reason. Then he tries to blow the place up. Why? No reason. And these two? Why didn't they demand their freedom when Faulkner forced them to stay? Why are they such selfish, destructive maniacs? And why do they suddenly decide to care about the Biodome? Oh right, no reason. It's a hollow, pointless, no reason film, written, if you dare to call it that, by five people who wouldn't know comedy if you beat their heads in with Henny Youngman's corpse. And guess what? Our star dickheads want to make a fucking sequel. Hey! Doomasses! Bio-doot!